G'day everyone, it's me, the anti theocrat back with another one. Now, I've missed this one in my last reply to the, um, uh, my last follow-up to the Totalitarians video I did a couple of videos back. Um, it really should have gone in with that, but oh well, we'll do it now, won't we? This might be another short one, uh, along with yesterday's one, uh, going back to the Totalitarians. So let's see, what are we up against? Uh, the Interpreter, apparently published by the Lowly Institute. COVID-19 Responses. Why Feminist Leadership Matters in a Crisis. Well, I think we can uh, take a look at the one I did yesterday on Sweden and decide that feminist leadership, particularly feminist leadership, is no fucking good to anyone. Uh, it's barely scratching the surface of the problems. Anyway, this uh, really interested me was just this subtitle too often gender equality jettisoned where real problems real problems in quotation marks arise it is not only is this mistaken uh, it, not only is this mistaken it can cost lives mistaken not only is this a mistake i don't know i don't know why this can cost lives i have no idea <clears throat> i got a feeling that what they're talking about is um here is is the um, violence that's expected in the homes that has only been proven through an increase in Google searches on the topic uh, because the phone services and everything else is down. Uh, but anyway, I want to know this. Does this mean that equality, gender equality issues are not real? Or does it mean that they don't believe there are any real problems, uh, which would throw gender equality into that basket as well? And that just makes me wonder why they give a fuck or do any of this shit. Uh, attention seeking? I think that's the best answer, is this is just attention seeking. Uh, because however you work this in, gender equality is not a real problem. Anyway, moving on, uh, the UN Women, Asia and Pacific. You know, through a lot of Asia, women don't have a really big problem with equality. Uh, I know that China is still a very patriarchal system. I know that Asian men can be very, um, what's what's the, the word that the feminists love to use at the moment is machismo machismo isn't it machismo i don't know it's a fucking south it's a, a latino word that they're using um i know that that is a thing with asian men it's it's to do with maintaining the um face thing that goes on women don't have to have as much face as men have to have and unfortunately in a society where face is made important uh, especially amongst men you are going to find that women are not going to be considered as highly. Now, unfortunately for the Asian women, they help to maintain this system. So sort out your own shit first, then moan, okay? Okay, little girl. Extraordinary times call for extraordinary measures. And as seen by the actions of White House and even our own Australian government, the unusual mandates for gender balance and equality have already fallen by the wayside. Uh, what? Extraordinary times call for extraordinary measures. Yes. And as seen by the actions of the White House and even our own Australian government, yeah, there's been extreme actions. We've had to lock down. Okay, we've stopped the spread of this disease in Australia by locking down. That's pretty extreme, but we'll get over it. The usual mandates for gender balance and equality have already fallen by the wayside. Is that because they're not real problems? They're not as significant as other problems we might be having? I, I know you pointed this out right at the top, that's not a real problem, is it? No, but I'm asking it again, and I'm probably going to continue to ask it. It hardly seems like a time to complain about this. After all, well, no. It's not a time to complain about your not real problem. <laughs> I agree. 
there are lives at stake. Are they? Are they? What, the men who have to now stay at home with their bitchy wife? Those men who prefer to go to work to not be around the house all day? Their lives are now at home. Uh, their lives are now at stake. I don't know how you're uh, addressing this because you just keep saying gender. However, if gender cannot be part of the conversation during a crisis, when can it be? Yeah, yeah, right. Let's discuss the problems that men face in the household. Let's discuss the problems that men have entering into what are considered women's spaces. I mean, I'm an at-home father. It has meant a hell of a lot of discrimination and extremely rude behaviour from women and particularly feminists over the last 22, 23 years. Let's discuss that, shall we? That's not what you want to discuss? Okay, let's move on with the article, shall we? After all, we know that women are disproportionate. Women, we finally got there. We finally got there. Women are dispropor disproportionately affected by disasters. With crisis exploiting structural inequalities that affect preparedness, response, impact, number of deaths and recovery. That's right. Apparently it's women who are having trouble with recovery. The number of deaths. The impact overall. Uh, because it's not the men who aren't working at the moment. No, it's only the women. The response. That's right. We need more response for the women's because the impact, the number of deaths and recovery is not happen, is not a problem for men. Forget the fact that men are dying in greater numbers, that men are more susceptible to it, that men have the worst health impact, uh, effects from it. I mean, I'm assuming the sterile, sterility problem that is one of the side effects of having gotten this disease is not as much an issue for women as it is for men. Our, our biology in that area is quite sensitive to this sort of thing. Male sterility from viral infections is a real problem. So yes, there are inequalities, and it's not fucking women who are disproportionately being affected. Not at all. You've just said by disasters. Because, well, you know, what's a viral disaster compared to a flood? Well, who do you think gets into the floodwaters and saves people and rescues people? Do you see a lot of women doing that? I'm not even going where, there, where the answer is. Okay, further, we know that the COVID-19 is not gender neutral. Amongst other things, women are overrepresented in health services on the front line and still not catching it as often or dying from it as often don't give me this front line shit don't do not give me this front line shit when it's men still catching it and dying if you were in the front line and you were catching it in the same numbers that men are catching it and you were dying in the same numbers as men were dying i would say then being in the front line was a problem for you but even more so if you were dying in greater numbers but when you're not, when your numbers are less, I don't give a flying fuck if you are represented in the front line. You should be the front line because you are not as susceptible. Do you want to throw a load of men in there who are more susceptible? Do you want to kill more people by having men work in those front line jobs? And given there are men in those frontline jobs, and given that men have died in those frontline jobs around the world, no, I just don't give a fuck. And in casual employment, most likely to be hit hard by economic downturn. <clears throat> men may be more likely to be uh, infected. Oh, that's nice. Recognition based on early assessment of Italian data. Actually, assessment of worldwide data. This was produced on the 31st of March. By then, we pretty much already knew that men were more susceptible. But yes, based on Italian data, well, yes, that's a good place to base it. I'll give you that. Um, as to this economic downturn problem, 
there's a whole raft of issues in there. I started discussing them in one of the other videos. You see, the two, the two working partner households are what fucked up our economy. When we couldn't, when households no longer only had one income in them, they had a lot more money in them. They had two incomes. And for decades now, economists have praised economies for keeping wages down. Because when wage levels are stable, the economies are more stable. We have less um, inflation. The problem being that inflation still occurs but they've looked at the amount of money in our households, the amount of spare money in our households, and decided we don't need pay rises. So for the last three odd decades, at least, it could go right back to the 80s. We haven't had significant pay rises because we haven't needed it. We haven't needed to argue for them because they were not required. In the 80s, people still fought for increased pay, then more women in the workforce, then more money in the households, less need to argue when the pays didn't go up. So don't give me this economic downturn shit. You not being able to work might eventually save us from having to all be low income earners when we choose to be a single income family and look after our children, as I do. Right, I'm going to move on. We also know that the cure for so of social, the cure of social distances is gendered, is it? For so many Australian women, home is not a place of safety. For a hell of a lot of Australian men, it isn't. You know, it's normally pretty much statistically about the same, and we know that women instigate. <laughs> Please hold, we'll be with you again shortly. Please hold, we'll be get with you again shortly. Please hold, we'll be with you again shortly. Okay, let's see if we can get back to this. That was my phone ringing. If you haven't seen it, that ringtone is uh, one of the earlier videos I tried uh, the channel with. Um, it's a sort of, it was created to be the ringtone that makes you pick up your phone. <laughs> Trust me, it works. When your phone starts telling you it's not going to rape you and patriarchy, patriarchy, it really gets you to answer it quickly. Um, I used to have a problem with not hearing my ringtones. I created some great klaxons and things, but when that came about, it was brilliant. Uh, so getting back to this, domestic violence is a major health problem according to the World Health Organization. Well, we know how badly they've been discredited, so let's not give a flying fuck about the World Health Organization, what they say. By the way, they only have gendered programs in these areas. They are all women's safety programs. So how the fuck would we know if there was any problem for men when they blatantly ignore it? It is another failing of the World Health Organization that they have gendered everything they do. With one in three women around the world experiencing physical or sexual violence, mostly from, an intimate, mostly from an intimate partner, I would like to point out that a lot of that uh, violence they're supposedly experiencing is not physical or sexual. It's why you've expanded the definition to include financial and emotional and a whole range of other things is because there was not enough physical or sexual violence. So don't, you know, go narrowing it down now. You have expanded this definition and expanded this definition for years in order to get more numbers. Those numbers are still pretty low and pathetic. And again, we know things about these figures. We know that you ignore men. We know from other studies that have been done that men are almost as often the victims of the violence that you have defined. And they are often driven to it by women who instigate the violence. We also know that when there is only one way violence in a relationship, it is more often women. And that it is more common in households to have violence in both directions. Now we know all these things, 
So why in the fuck do you or the World Health Organization think you need to gender this? This would serve better if you didn't. As Erin Pizzi uh, discovered back in the 1960s, violence is not gendered, it is generational. A mother who is violent is as likely to produce violent children as a father who is violent. We would do better if you twats would give up this gendered shit and get a grip on reality. Uh, and for those of you who don't know, Erin Pizzi was the, first, the person who started the shelter movement. She created the first women's shelter in the world. She tried to create men's shelters and was eventually driven out of her own shelter, the one she paid for, the, the initial one she paid for, by the feminist movement. Um, and eventually went into hiding in the US because of the threats of violence and all the rest of it she was getting. Um, so yes, this is, this is how feminists will fight against truth. They're nice people. They're really nice people who want to tell us that men are the creators of violence. Mm, yes. Nice people. Uh, we should always question what gets called a crisis. So COVID isn't a crisis. Uh, Counter-terrorism. So terrorism isn't a crisis. Diseases, they're not crisis. Uh, political violence, not a crisis. The stock market, so stock market crashes are not a crisis. They might even impact the one that you're going to try and push forward as the only real crisis, I suspect. Areas of life where elite men may be affected often earn the title. What? What? What's this got to do with elite men? Well, can you fucking give us an example? Can you point to where the truth in this is? The realities of women's insecurity and structural poverty often do not. Do you realise our Australian government poured $150 million into domestic violence during the coronavirus lockdown, and yet phone services have seen a decrease in numbers, and men's services have seen a slight increase, but... The only services available were no fucking good to them. And the only way they are showing that there is any increase is because people like me are doing Google searches for this shit. What do you think I do when I'm locked in? I research my stuff. <sighs> ay, 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 ay. I do not know what this has to do with elite men and which ones are the elite ones I would like to I would like to know these things can you point to the elite men and say that's the guy who's being favored and can you tell me then how he's being favored and the rest of us are getting fuck all I got my stimulus check um it was very nice thank you and I'm not an elite man Maybe I am. You haven't defined an elite man. Maybe you think all men are elite, which doesn't say a lot for your opinion of women. Across all our research on gender, Australia's international decision-making, uh, one trend really stands out during these times. Gender inequality is a fair-weather friend quickly abandoned when real problems arise. Yes, we're back to it isn't a real problem, or you do not believe there are real problems. Either way, you lose. As much as we can have the formal policies and rules that institute equality in good times, when a crisis strikes, informal, gendered rules of the game dominate decision-making and decision. Okay, I don't know why you had to double down there, but uh, with women's perspectives and presence often entirely absent. Uh, what? Didn't you say you were the front line in this thing? Are you telling me you're not the front line? That you're the 
back of the front line? I don't know. What are, what are you trying to tell me? What are you saying about women at this time? Can't they step up their fucking game and, and get involved? Is Is it not possible? Is it only possible for them to be nurses and carers? Can't they fucking get involved in politics and decision making? Is it beyond them? Look at the G20 Virtual Leaders Summit last week hosted by Saudi Arabia. I have two problems. Um, A, the G20 leaders are a very small number of world leaders in any case. It is very common for men to have the top roles, but that doesn't mean that the leaders are going to be represented. I don't know, there's a whole range of things going on there, but seriously, hosted by Saudi Arabia, did you think Saudi Arabia was going to invite women to the table? Your problem with it is with the USA and Australia, but you can't see that Saudi Arabia is something different Issuing a communique that gestured vaguely to social shocks and damage. Only Angela Merkel remains as a G20 female leader. Oh, fucking useless bint that one is. Joined by invitee Ursula von der Leyen. Well, what? She was invited? She was in representing the European Union, the most failed organisation of all during this time. Are they still just apologising for the mistakes they made? Have they actually done anything yet? Have they managed to get through any support bills? Or are they still just too busy saying sorry, trying to save their asses? Fuck, I hope the EU dies. I hope Ursula von der Leyen goes down in flames. But she was invited. She's not a G20 leader, and she was invited. So even with Saudi Arabia at the table, there was a female leader and a female invitee not representing a G20 country. The G7 couldn't even agree on the outcome due to Trump's name-calling. Well, I, I have no idea what he was name-calling about, and I don't give a flying fuck. If you couldn't get past a bit of name-calling, you probably can't get past the word fuck. I use the word fuck. Get over it. It doesn't diminish my argument. It just adds my twist on it, my my emphasis, my feeling, my passion. You can't get past my passion to the raw argument underneath. If you can't get past Donald Trump's name calling to the argument he's making, you're worthless. No wonder women can't get up and get into these positions. We're all too upset. You said a naughty word. There are, of course, a few exceptions. There are. There are exceptions. When women are represented in the highest positions of leadership, they are more likely to look at the gendered impact of their decisions. Right, so women are fucked up. They're looking to the non-issues while there are issues at hand this is you telling me after you questioned whether or not this was a real issue that i should not ever hope for or vote for a female leader because they are more likely to look at the non-problems the non-issues in fact because you've made this clear this is about women they're going to look at them from a biased perspective this is what you're telling me. Never vote for a woman. Even those made in crisis. Right, so in the middle of crisis, they're looking at the non-problems. This is certainly true for the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade. For instance, for whom Julianne Guevara was appointed Gender Equality Ambassador. Well, what a fucking useful job that is. A non-issue ambassador. Only this fortnight. Right, so we're in the middle of a crisis and we've got a non-issue ambassador. Which, strategic, which, strategically or not, places her in a strong position to advocate for women 
and gender responses in domestic and internal affairs. Right, for women. For women. You've made it clear again that this is only ever going to be about women if we put women in places of power. Even though gender is not specific. Gender doesn't say women. It doesn't even say men. It says whatever in the, these days with the way you're describing gender, it says whatever in the fuck you want to identify as. But you keep bringing it down to women. Again, you've told me not only to not elect women because they will concern themselves with non-issues, they will make sure they bias their non-issues. Female leaders in Norway and New Zealand. New Zealand's... Look, do a Google search, will you, for New Zealand's leader during COVID. She got a bagging for mismanaging this. She got fucking bagged big time. Why does she keep coming up? Why does Norway fit in here, but not Sweden, an openly feminist government? Its top-ranking ministers are all women. They openly admit... They are a feminist government. My last video covered that issue. Feel free to watch it. You do not put Sweden in here for very good reasons. Why the fuck you think you put New Zealand in here, I do not know. Are you hoping that nobody will noticed, notice that Horseface got bagged out for doing a shitty job. Oh, they held special briefings for children. How fucking nice is that? Who makes the decisions in the houses? Who makes who makes a decision in my house? It's not my fucking kids. It never has been. But it's good to know you talk to kids. Ah, oh, the women dealing with the non-people who don't have to deal with the non-issue because it's their parents' responsibility. Talked about teachers and child care workers and aged care workers. <sighs> I understand there is a thing going on here and this needs discussing. Did it need to be the prime ministers of these countries dealing with this? My school did most of the work in dealing with getting work out for us to do the homeschooling. I go to the education department's website. It's fucking useless to me. There's almost nothing there. They're trying to push it out through the schools, which means my school principal, a male, is doing a lot of the work here. I did not need the Prime Minister to come and talk to me about this. What does the Prime Minister know about my homeschooling environment? Uh, and, and what's he going to do? Put together the class rosters for the school teachers? Debated school closures from the perspective that included the rights of parents and teachers. I don't give a shit, right? What was the Prime Minister doing wasting their time on that? Didn't they have a country to look after? In Prime Minister Scott Morrison's National COVID-19 Coordination Commission, only two out of eight appointed commissioners were women. Well, think it nice that you got two women up there. And ethnic and sexual diversity was nowhere to be seen. Oh no, they were straight and they were white. Oh, for fuck's sake. Now you're telling me only straight white women can get to the top because they're the only ones who are capable of it. You fucking queer darkies. I don't know what the fuck your skin colour you want to call it. Oh, my wife's yellow. Is that dark enough? So these women aren't capable of making it to these positions. That's what you're telling me. They're too worried about the non-issues. But hey, we managed to get two white women. White women seem more capable. In fact, two out of six, uh, two, at a ratio of one to three, women were good enough to make it to this uh, commission. That's not bad, you know. There's not that many women in representation. There's not that many women who run for positions in politics. See, you want to elect women, first they've got to run, 
then they've got to run on something other than non-issues. This is the key. There's no real big secret. And then you've got to convince the women they want to vote for the women. And it would probably help if they didn't continually push forward non-issues. This imbalance has not gone unnoticed, primarily with Australia's Public Service Commission requiring that boards across Australia, for instance, have a 50-50 gender balance. Oh good, so you're going to force in people who are not fucking qualified just to get a gender balance. You're the one who keeps telling me these people are not qualified. They look at everything with a bias. They're not capable of getting there. When they do get there, all they want to do is add that bias and then talk to the little kiddies. You're telling me these people are not qualified for the job and you want them forced into the job. Yet some have questioned whether now really is the time to call it out. There is never a time to call it out. You made it clear. This is a non-issue. We wonder why not. In fact, if it takes the lessons from internal affairs, we know that uh, international, sorry, affairs, we know that gender equality leadership lends to more comprehensive decision making. No, it fucking doesn't. Read less deaths. I'm not reading less deaths because I just covered Sweden, remember? Go back, one video, watch it. Lower levels of inter interstate violence. What? What? Interstate, what? As important now as ever before. And higher levels of co collaboration and consensus. What? What has this got to do with women? This is happening because we have a, something we have to deal with. And governments are getting together. And here in Australia, we've got less problem with our governments getting together and dealing with this than they have in the US or in the EU, which you seem so proud of. So what's this got to do with women? What you've told me about women so far is they deal with non-issues. I don't see how this is dealing with more comprehensive decision makings. I think the issue is that people are just getting down and doing the job. For a change, it's nice. Even in debates where prioritising the operational needs of a crisis or situation is always worth noting those lives are on whose lives are on the line men men for the record men you noted it yourself as shown from italy it's men and when women's inclusion matters no it fucking doesn't what matters is the right people are doing the right jobs the frontline carers seem to be women maybe that's where they're good at doing things. Maybe that's what they're good at. There, their inclusion matters. You're not saying that we need more male nurses. You drifted away from that subject real quick. We are the front line. You're not. You fucking write this crap. So you're not in the hospitals looking after people. But you didn't go to the point of saying we need men in the front line as well. No, you didn't. What you said is we need women at the top. Why? If women are good on the front line, maybe men are good at the top. The 150 million funding... For, oh, you've got to mention in that for domestic violence prevention, which was, by the way, specifically aimed at women and children. This was stated as part of the press conference, uh, the, the giving of this money. This was dedicated to women and children. I would like you to point that out, please. That was released at the weekend in Australia was a crucial me measure. It belated particularly con considering uh, rates of domestic violence have increased globally. Have they? Have they? Now, I did a video on this one too, remember? The evidence that there has been an increase is that there's been a decrease in phone services. There has been an increase in Google searches. And you know who's doing Google searches? That's right, it's me. 
It's me. It's people like me. Because we're making more videos during this time. We're locked in. I'm producing two videos a day at this point. What do you think I'm doing for getting information? I'm doing Google searches. I'm not being violated. Uh, if belated, particularly considering the rates of domestic violence have increased globally since the COVID-19 outbreak, you have absolutely no evidence of that. And I would bet that men are being violated in greater numbers if, if that's the case. You're not going to bring that up, though, are you? The UN has called for greater creativity by governments in addressing women's rights at this time. Well, the fucking UN can go suck my dick. Seriously, we've had it with the World Health Organization. We know what they've done recently. We know where they've gone wrong. We know where they fucked up. This is brought to light for regular society. The fuck up that the UN and the World Health Organization are. For those of us who've been watching this shit, we've known they've been a fuck up for a very long time. But this has brought this to the eye of the common person. Geez, Donald Trump took the money away from the World Health Organization. We wonder why. Well, you should have fucking wondered why when they were gender biasing everything. But I'm glad that they are noticing now. Even if it is just because it's been infiltrated by communists. Now is not the time for complaints and complacency or demoting the gender lens in favour of bias and narrow operational realities that fail to accurately represent and see half the population. Do they? Do they? Are you seriously telling me that what's going on does not represent or see half the population? Do you seriously believe that? Do you, you do realise that my wife is about to get um, a massive payout from the government because her job's been on hold since it started. And apparently the government is doing a thing called job keeper payments. That's my wife getting those payments, not me. Am I the ignored half? I got the the um the bailout money, but I'm not gonna get the money she's getting. Basically, she's gonna almost get in one week what I got as my incentive money. So are you saying that this affects women less, the more, that they're going to get all this free money for sitting around home? Domestic and international politics must reflect on the fact that instability is often a key time when regression occurs in the fight for gender equality. Yes, we men would like you to stop ignoring our gender, please. Gender equality is not just good for time. Uh, for good times and luxury goods no it's a non-issue it's for fucking never it is for fucking never <laughs> shut up phone we've already had you ring once we do not need messages gender equality is not just good for time for good times or luxury times gender matters in a crisis no it fucking doesn't unless you mean men are more susceptible and men are dying in greater numbers. <sighs> Fucking non-issues. Fucking non-issues. Right, press the right button, you dickhead. Right, as it, I'm done. Um, hopefully this is done with totalitarians because I'm really fucking pissed off at this. Oh, women would do it better thing coming up nobody knew how to do this we we know from my last video that sweden didn't do it particularly well the world's only feminist government the fact that you tried to make this uh that where feminism feminism itself was important not women not uh, the best people for the job no you titled this feminism and yet the only feminist government in the world has basically fucked this up. You know, Sweden shouldn't have even had a big outbreak. It's not the sort of place the Chinese travel to in big numbers. Italy has a black market trade in um, 
clothing, largely fueled by Chinese labour. There's a reason why Italy was infected. Australia, uh, the EU and America largely, America particularly, are the places that the Chinese travel. And in the days after this really took off in China, uh, the Chinese are, are claiming that 500 thousand people escaped the area and traveled either in China or out of China. They hunted them down in China, but in the rest of the world they infected us. Big hits in the US, where the Democratic Party, Nancy Pelosi, encouraged people to hug the Chinese in Chinatown. And the um, New York governor decided that it was racist to shut down things. You see, oh, I, I'm going to go. I'm just going to pack it in and call it quits. I hate it when I get to the end of these videos. And there's just so much more to say. There is just so much more to say. This is a non-issue. Bringing feminism to the fore bringing uh, the numbers of women not being represented in the G20 and the uh, whatever in the fuck thing the government put together here, wanting uh, no no black or, or retarded women included in their numbers. Um, I don't give a shit. I just don't give a shit. These are non-issues. Absolutely fucking non-issues. And when you tell me it's just about women, that... Um, the representation of um, coloured and retarded men wasn't in that thing. So, you know, that's a problem, isn't it? If we need fucking coloured, retarded people everywhere, sure. <laughs> no, I'm not being sexist. I'm just, or racist, or, or bloody, I don't know. I'm just not being, I'm just using your thinking here. This is the thinking that came from this article. All right. I'm giving up. I'm out of here. I've been the anti-theocrat. May God's remain fictional. See you in the next one.